always think that black people always die first in the movies. Well, I mean, it, yeah. Outside of stereotypes, um, I, I think that it ties into the lack of um, importance placed on their life in general. Mm -hmm. So they they become obsolete first, right? Yeah. So we we place no value on on the black character's life, mm -hmm. and therefore we can kill them all first. Yeah. Why do you think that black people always die first in the movies? Like, they always just trip and die first. I don't know, bad writing, maybe? Bad. Why do you think that black people always die first in movies? So what do I think about that? Or yeah, why? why? Why do you think we always die first? Or what do you think about it? I think, do you know what? I was watching a, on, actually on YouTube, I was, I was watching a compilation of yesterday. So this is related, but it was dancing, um, where they had all these dance moves from all these movies over the years, and they play one song over it, and we just clip after clip after clip. They, you mm -hmm. know, lots of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and, mm -hmm. and other people. And I was just saying to my yeah, I don't want to get the baby. I don't, I don't want you to sue me when. That's all right. I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was saying to my other half, who's mixed race, I was saying, wow, there was almost no black people there at all. Yeah. And you know, I was laughing. I was saying, you know, because white people are obviously better dancers than black people. But, <laughs> I love your sarcasm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do my best. Why do black people always die? Because uh, there are a lot of times, so there is this push in Hollywood to have more diversity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you can put a, you can throw a black actor in your movie and kill him off really quickly. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to have a black guy on screen, but you can say there was a black guy in your movie and increase the oh, diversity numbers. Yeah, so that true. might be something of it too. True. Like, the wanting to include black people in the movie, but not wanting to give them an actual role. Role. Yeah. Why do you think black people always die first in movies? Why? That's basically full racism because I mean, like, if you go back to cowboy and Indian movies, mm -hmm. if there was ever a black actor that killed a black actor. If you go back to like pretty much any action movie, mm -hmm. the black actor is always the one. Yeah, that's unfortunate. This guy doesn't want to show his face, so he told me to show his beautiful legs. There we go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what about you? What would be your response to that? I think that we have to rewrite those narratives, right? Yeah. We have to start valuing and understanding perspective mm -hmm. that is not the same storyline that's told over and over again. That there's yeah. phenomenal stories, powerful stories about black women and black men that need to be portrayed. And that I think that, you know, the world would be much more healthy and full and educated as a whole if mm -hmm. those storylines were told. Definitely. It's in, it's in the hands also of Hollywood to empower black executives in those positions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because those are the people who are cutting the checks yeah, and are black getting... Black writers, the, black execs. The, exactly. It's not, it's not that those scripts aren't being written, mm -hmm. right? It's not necessarily that those roles don't exist. It's also like up to the studios yeah. to not perpetuate the same... Hard, like like horrible old storylines. Yeah. Why do you think black people always die first in movies? Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't want the black person to be the hero. Uh, why do you think black people always die first in movies? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, it's probably around. Uh, Wow, that's actually a really good question. Why don't you die first in movies? I think probably in a, in a, in a fucked up kind of cultural sense. It yeah. Be because of the way black people are viewed in society. Yeah. Like, oh, that could be like the go-to person to go first kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, just like there's like the token black guy in a lot of movies, you know? So yeah. I think for things like that, it's shitty, but that's probably one of the reasons why. Why do you think that black people always die first in the movies? <laughs> It's something we always ask, but it's nothing I never really um, came around to an answer besides uh, not having a lead role. Yeah. Racism. Yeah. That's what everybody's saying. And, yeah, because it's like it's no, it's no other, it's no other reason. Yeah, so, true. Why do you think that black people always die first in movies? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, unfortunately, it's a lot of racism. Yeah. Uh, I guess. They just think they're more expendable yeah. than most other people. Why do you think that black people always die first in, in movies? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? Well, okay. yes. It's pensory, I guess. <laughs> okay. so do you guys think that it's harder for black people to break into the film industry and why? Yeah. Or do you disagree that? Do you think it's easy? No, no, easy? I think it's difficult. I think things yeah. will change as a result of uh, George Floyd's death mm -hmm. and the activism that we have been seeing for the last three weeks yeah. and the fact that our people 
and all people of conscience, not just uh, black brothers and sisters, but white brothers and sisters, Asian brothers and sisters, Latinx brothers and sisters, yeah. have, have not let it go this time. They've, we, they've learned from the past, we've learned from the past, that if you let it go, they will let up. Yep. We can't it's, let it's up. Gonna we have repeat to put the itself. pressure on. Yeah. But up until this point, it's been very difficult. And if you look at the percentages of black actors uh, with meaningful roles, if you look at the percentage of black producers, uh, if you look at the percentages of black directors, uh, there is a long way to go. But I yeah. think that this activism that we're in, this phase, and people are de and people are demanding that we be portrayed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And also the important thing to understand, and I say this as a filmmaker, I'm a film professor at Columbia <laughs> University. Yeah, I've oh wow. I've been on faculty there for, um, uh, for 22 years. I'm oh. a writer, director, and producer. Mm -hmm. And you would go in with black projects and have white executives tell you that, that those projects are not black enough. Oh my God. Or that you needed a white main character in order for it to sell. Yeah, and, and that's, that's have, ridiculous. It's really ridiculous, but I think we have proven that our stories are, so when, look, when we talk about Black Lives Matter, absolutely the most urgent thing is to stop the murder of black people mm -hmm. by this militarized police department. Yeah. But we're also saying is that our art matters, our culture matters, our voices matter, um, our families matter. Yeah. And I think that we're in a moment that if we keep demonstrating, we keep fighting on all levels, keep our fists clenched and understanding that it's all part of who we are, that this will that we're in a moment that we'll start to see a difference. Yeah. And our stories can be about us. Yeah, exactly. So For us and by us. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So so then you would agree that it's harder for black people to make it in the industry then? Oh definitely, because I think I think as well a lot of the writers are are, are white. I think a lot of the directors are white. Ahem. Well mm -hmm. come here. <laughs> <laughs> so ab absolutely. I mean I think you know, I, I also think what's good is that you need a, you need actually a mix. You need all the races in movies because again, I just don't think it's good to have movies that are just just have black people. Exactly. Know? Absolutely, because you know historically there have been less roles, right? Mm -hmm. So historically, black actors had to play black parts and yeah. because there were barely any black parts, especially early on. You you were either a uh, slave, a uh, maid. Or a criminal. Yep, that is true. Or, or an athlete. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, wait a minute. There's so much more to be told here. Yeah. Because in reality, you know, black we could do so much more. Everywhere. The industry is basically started off white, and I'm pretty sure they're going to try to keep it like that, which is wrong. But we're getting up there step by step. Puerto Rican, black. Mm -hmm. We're getting a few actors up there. We have Louis Guzman. We have a few other. Good actors up there. Perfect. Where are you from, sir? Puerto Rico. Oh, perfect. Amazing. I, I want to go to Puerto Rico one day. Yeah, it's very beautiful. I, I, they're, they're, I can see maybe, yeah, but at the same time, I don't really know because I don't like really, I'm not in that industry, so I can't really tell you for sure. Yeah. Yeah? yeah I, I would say so. Why? Why is that? Uh, just, you know, just a lot of racism, a lot of, uh, Mm -hmm. They definitely have to work a lot harder. Than yeah. To try to... I don't know if I agree or not. I have to think of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're supposed to say yes, but maybe. I don't know. Let me think. He's not sophisticated on. Yeah, you know. On how the rate of, of yeah. black people breaking through in Hollywood. <laughs> That's not his jam. He's a lawyer. He doesn't know. Yeah. About... You, so you don't know? Well, no. I mean, I know what the perception is or whatever, but I'd have to. You and I know what my my, 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 know. my my perception would be yes or whatever, but it's but but also it's like it could be because that's just what I've been told or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that actually I would I would want to look, I, I would I, I would want to look at some kind of like metric or whatever. I'll put mm -hmm. it this way: there's something about a legal education that makes you very, very uncomfortable taking strong stances. Okay. Like after you go through law school, you learn so much about how to think through things and what the importance of evidence and how evidence can be used. Okay, so you wouldn't just say, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I so think it's this. Because you're a lawyer, so you're exactly. taught to, Maybe, yeah. to research. To exactly. Well, I agree. Yes. Yes. So, whereas I think right now we live in a culture where people are very comfortable taking really strong positions mm -hmm. with evidence they heard. Do you think that's harder for black people to break into the film industry? So, yeah. Try. Yeah. Why? Why did they? Why is it harder for them to break into the film industry? Well, 
know, you had the competition. Competition, the money, is, you know, the white people, the Caucasian. Yeah, true. Um, what if, about the Hispanics? It's Hispanic people. Oh, his, yeah, it, that is true. That okay? Maybe I should say people of color. Okay, that's, that's better. a better question, right? Yes. So it's harder for people of color to yes. break into the film industry. Yes. Where are you from? I'm I'm born here, but my parents are from Puerto Rico. Oh, I, do you think that it's hard for black people to break into the acting industry? Well, do you think it's harder? Um, it is harder than other groups of people because uh, a lot of actors are being typecast pretty mm -hmm. much into the similar roles. Um, now it's starting and I, from my opinion, it's starting to open up but it's very little mm -hmm. at a very slow pace mm -hmm. but for the most part yeah, it's still typecast. That's true. Um, for sure. Why? For sure. I don't, I don't know why, um, but one of the things that I've seen that I've known has been like a big debate in like Hollywood is, is I mean, it's, it, is, it is a debate, so I'm not saying I'm either way on it, but I know that um, a lot of like English black actors have been getting a lot of these roles lately, mm -hmm. like in, in America. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that is necessarily, but um, you know, it's, it's interesting that, they're, that, that it's tougher for American black actors to get American roles. Yeah. It's easier for like English people from other countries, mm -hmm. not just England, but other countries to get to get the roles here. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is, a, this is a, I mean, there's so much that goes on in Hollywood that's <laughs> against the black culture. That, that is true. It's, it's, it's becoming more and more obvious as the years go on, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's just one of those many things, I think, yeah. unfortunately. I believe that because I'm all about skin again. Yeah. Not being able to get ahead. You know what I'm saying? We can be some of the best actresses, the best actors. Yeah. And still, it just it doesn't work out for us as far as a lead role yeah. in anything. True. So, yeah. I'm even surprised what Obama was in office. So. <laughs> Who is your favorite actor? Well, I, I actually have to name a couple. Okay, that's okay. Being a married couple. Mm -hmm. And they're both passed on, but Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee. Mm. And the reason why they're my favorites is because they not they were actors uh, and activists, mm -hmm. which made them artivists. Yeah. So they're artivists. I've never heard that term. I'm yeah, gonna research that. When you can, when you uh, when you are uh, Harry Belafonte always says, and and he is also one of my favorite actors, mm -hmm. and. He always says a lot of people think that he was an activist who became an artist, but he was an artist who became an activist. An act yeah. And Ozzy Davis, Ruby D, Harry Belafonte no! put their careers on the line, often sacrificed jobs and money so that they could march with Dr. King, mm -hmm. so that they could support radical causes. Um, Why are you on all that way looking for her? Um, I'm a Panther veteran, wow. I'm the New York Panther 21. Ah. The same case what? that Afeni Shakur was part of. Wow. And Ozzie Davis and Ruby D supported the Panther 21 at a time when it wasn't popular to support Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. When it could be risky, when the government had people under surveillance. And so you would always find them on the front lines of every struggle and using their platform to speak about social justice, human rights, to speak about black causes, to speak against the war in Vietnam, yeah. to speak out on behalf of South Africa, and always at the forefront before these things came, um, uh, became popular. Yeah. So, so putting yourself out there in the same way we've had Muhammad Ali step out and Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. and pay the ultimate price is why I named those three as, uh, as my heroes, not only in terms heroes and sheroes, not only in terms of their acting ability, <laughs> but, but in activism. terms of being being movement leaders, being mm -hmm. artists. Yeah, perfect. I would say Alfred Woodard. Sorry. I would say Alfred Woodard. Mm -hmm. is my favorite actor. Ah, perfect. Um, who's your favorite actor? <laughs> uh, a lot of people laugh, but I really like Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I don't really have any. It's hard to name one. Uh, I would say I like uh, I like Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Uh, I like Malik Yoba. Mm -hmm. um, I like I like Will Smith. Mm. My favorite actor. That's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, cause it's gonna sound crazy because it's actually not a black person. No, that's fine. It doesn't have to be a black person. Seymour Hoffman before he died. Oh, okay. I was a big fan of his. Oh. Uh, his stuff, yeah. Who 
is your favorite actor? Oh goodness. I have no idea. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington is phenomenal. Ooh. Denzel Washington is fantastic. Um, I see ya! Yeah, I mean, I also really appreciate Zoe Kravitz's like, entrance into acting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Janelle Monet was phenomenal. I love her. Film. Um, Hidden Figures? She, yes, she was phenomenal. Who else do we really love? Think about powerful female actresses. Um, I mean, Halle Berry, obviously, Halle for her Oscar, and there's, some, there's, there's a lot. Favorite of all is Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, mm, interesting. Viola Davis and Scarlett Johansson, who would you choose and why? Viola, sorry. Viola Davis, um, to be honest, Scarlett Johansson, mm -hmm. um, I just, I love Viola Davis, I think she's amazing. I just, I like Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson a little bit better, mm -hmm. to be honest, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I already know Scarlett Johansson, so I guess... You don't know Viola Davis? No, I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Viola Davis. Viola Davis, why? I feel like she's a better actress. Viola Davis or Scarlett Johansson, who would you choose? I would choose Viola Davis. Why? Why? I support all black actresses. Ah, I think that's amazing. Viola Davis. Viola Davis, why? Well, uh, she she she's done um, a lot of stuff like like one of the things in uh, uh, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. um, she's done stuff in um, a lot of uh, Marvel comics. Yeah. Stuff and that's I'm a kind of fan of that. So yeah. I, I would say her. And you know uh, how to get away with murders. Oh my God, I love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Viola Davis or Scarlett Johansson, who would you choose? I go for. Um, <laughs> Viola Davis, because I just think more interesting, and I like. She's more her. interesting. Uh, Viola Davis has a depth and an ability to be a dynamic actor in ways that I think Scarlett Johansson doesn't always. Mm, interesting. Portray like I, I feel like Scarlett Johansson has been put into a very specific line of typecast. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think that. While Viola Davis has been typecasted in the in the past, mm -hmm. recently I've seen her in a lot of different roles, different like how roles. to get away with murder. Exactly. Usually that would be like a white person leading that, you yeah, know? Exactly, exactly. And for that to show to do so well, yeah, I think it's really profound, and it speaks a lot to the ability for a dark-skinned black woman to not only be a powerhouse, an authority figure. But an object of desire to be feminine, to be soft, it really allows a level of um, depth and complexity to come through. Well, I mean, without question, Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. um, she is a tremendous actress. She is a strong black woman. Mm -hmm. She brings layer and depth to everything that she does. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's simply no question to me in terms of... of uh, of, of who I would choose, and I especially mm -hmm. say that if uh, if it was something that I had written or directed and had my choices yeah. <laughs> of who would be in my exactly. Case. And you know, like some of my friends, my white friends, have said like, "Oh, she's too much." She's and I, I often get that myself. Like people tell me that maybe I'm too dramatic, I'm too out there, I have too much antics. Maybe in my acting, I need to you know calm it down a bit. Like, what do you think about that? Like, as a yeah, writer, yeah. like what kind of acting do you like? What kind of acting do you prefer? The acting I prefer, and, and I know that sometimes uh, what our actors and actresses face is saying that we come on too strong. Yeah, I get that a too lot. Too powerful, too emotion. But we're people of emotion and mm -hmm. feeling. We're people who are musical people even when we're not singing. Yeah. We're people who are dancers uh, uh, even when there's no beat. Yeah. Just the way we move, just the, the rhythm of our life. And I think that has to be respected, if you will, as a whole school of acting, yeah. as a, a whole school of narration in terms of how we tell stories. Remember, our storytelling tradition goes back to the African griot. Mm -hmm. The griot, and that's spelled G-R-I-O-T, was the... I'm also going to research that. Was the, ...was the man or the woman in the tribe who sat underneath the, the tree called the Bao Bao tree. And they told stories. And when they told stories, it was music, 
it was dance, it was drama, it was poetry, but the griot had to do two things in order to make he or she a, a good griot. Mm -hmm. They had to be entertaining, but they had to be informative. Mm -hmm. They were our historians, they were our news reporters, they were our prophets. So if, if you were a griot and you were boring, you could have all the facts <laughs> in the world and people yeah. were like, you okay. know, I already had my nap. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I would go to this other village to see the griot. But by the same token, if you were a griot and you had popping beats and great dance moves, mm -hmm. but your your history wasn't right, your facts were right, people would call you out. They'd be like, I don't know, that griot singing about that hunt? Mm -hmm. You know, talking about that uh, Jomo killed that lion? I was at that hunt. It was his little sister, Keisha. So you had to be both. And I think we need to be griots. Yes. I think we have to understand that as artists, it's so important that that storytelling represents who we the are. History yeah. Of who we are. Exactly. The present of who we are, but also points direction, a cultural, political, mm -hmm. activist direction yeah. of where we should be headed as a. Yeah, people. I agree. Like even sometimes in school, like I'm acting, and then I'd, I'd have like people say like, "Why don't you like tone it down and feel it more?" And I mean, I understand that it's good to feel because. Because thought, no matter how subtle, it registers on camera. And it's good to internalize things and, and feel it. And it shows on the camera. But I also believe that it, it's important to express yourself freely, you know. Absolutely. In a way that, that, because that's who I am naturally. I use my hands and I, I, I have a lot of antics. And so, so, like, I don't like when people say, you know, tone it down, it's too much, you know. Yeah, that tone it down sounds similar to what we've been hearing in general about how we should, uh, you know, especially be, uh, before uh, Brother George Floyd was murdered, I say lynched, it was a yeah, modern was day lynching, lynching. Yeah. and we would talk about slavery and tell the total stories, and remember people would be like, well slavery has been over, why don't you tone it down, why oh, don't come we move on? on? Yeah. The mistake in put, trying to move on from your history is, is that we're going to be is forgetting who mm -hmm. we are, where we came from, and that we're doomed yep. to repeat those uh, things. Yeah, it's bound to repeat so itself. So the celebration yep. of, of Juneteenth, for example, is a perfect example. And the, and the call from that and from this moment is that we as a people need to remember to remember, mm -hmm. and white people need to remember that they forgot. Yeah. And in, in terms of their forgetting, we can't forget. Exactly. We've got to tell those stories mm -hmm. through music, through dance, through drama. Mm -hmm. We have to tell these stories to our children, even when they think they don't want to hear it. Yep. It will kick in at some point. Mm -hmm. It will be part of their DNA. And they will understand that that storytelling, you as an actress, my wife as an actress, yeah. me as a filmmaker, that is so important for us to be those revolutionary griots. I agree. I agree. And I appreciate you guys so much for taking your time out to answer these questions. And you have been very insightful. I'm going to research like a lot of things that you just said. I'm going to do a lot of research and I appreciate it so much. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Yeah, and I also want you to, to, look, to, to research Paul Robeson. Okay. Because when we, you know, I mentioned my heroes. And, and also people that I was fortunate to be mentored by. Mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte, Ozzie Davis, Ruby D. Their mentor was a brother named Paul Robeson. Mm -hmm. Who was the greatest actor of his generation, black or white. Who was a singer. Who was an attorney. Who was a uh, uh, who was an athlete, but who put his whole life and career on the line mm -hmm. for standing up for the rights of black people and for all poor and oppressed people. Yeah. So Paul Robeson needs to be part of your research. I will. I will. And thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. I don't know, Davis, she's more violent, more 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 aggressive. Yeah, and that's the kind of acting that you and, like. And, and, and she's a color. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so funny because we, we, we watched the succession of these clips, mm -hmm. movie after movie after movie, and the, you know, the, there were just no black people in there, and, yeah. and almost none. And um, yeah, no, so I, I totally have a lot of friends who are actors, and a lot of friends who are, who are black, and I just, you mm -hmm. know, I, I agree with you, there's not enough main protagonists, yeah, exactly. not enough main characters, there's not enough depth to the characters, you know, there's not enough complexity, and you just, you just want more... I suppose a reflection of society. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying not to get the baby. Yeah, yeah, cause, I, yeah. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I totally agree that that um, you know, at the moment, it seems very often as the, as, as the the black character is, is playing a function rather. Than exactly. Than a, than a yeah, I agree. I agree. Character. Most people are very gullible. Amen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, most people are dumb. And even, <laughs> even worse than that, that is true, right? But like, even worse than that. Okay, I like, disagree. That most people are dumb. No, that's, yeah. that's kind of <laughs> undisputable. But, <laughs> but, 
But I would say this. If there's one thing you learn in elite education, it's to look down. Uh, look down <laughs> on everyone else. Like yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. But really, what is it? It's not that people are dumb. I don't actually. I, I disagree. With it. It's not that people are dumb. It's that people haven't been taught how to think. They yeah. don't know how to form good beliefs. Yeah. They think that if enough people are saying something, they should take that seriously. That if they like a person, then what the person is saying is also true. Mm -hmm. Like they haven't learned how to use evidence to form good beliefs. Okay. And until you are using evidence to form good beliefs, right. the quality of your beliefs and it doesn't even matter how. How, what they are on is just the quality of your beliefs are low and that inhibits your ability to understand the world. As a black entertainer, I've had some success. I've been thankful for that. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, there is this tacit expectation that's put on black people by white people and black people as well, mm -hmm. that because you're black, you'll have something to say about blackness. Black people should get the opportunity to be individuals. Yep. And, and it's one of the tragedies of of the time we live in, especially like the moment we live in right now. Okay, so my name is uh, Jamal Joseph, mm -hmm. J-A-M-A-L, last mm -hmm. name Joseph, J-O-S. You're Joseph? Joseph. My I'm last name Joseph, is Joseph too. Family. <laughs> Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-A. Uh, I'm a film professor at Columbia uh, University, writer, director, producer, actives, mm. and proud veteran of the Black Panther Party. Ah, uh, perfect. George Joseph. Mm-hmm. Well, nice to meet you guys, and thank you so much. And tell me, and say what you do. I'm a writer and actress. Ah, uh, perfect. Joyce should show her face because this is a legendary black woman. Yes, can I see your face? <laughs> so folks can know, she's graced the cover of magazine. She's been on Broadway. Oh. She's been in films. So when you talk about somebody who's career and active, you know, and act, you know, and and, and you're so beautiful. Active. And so her locks. So when Joyce broke into modeling, Joyce, leave the mask down for a second. <laughs> So when Joyce broke into modeling, modeling actually came from her, and the first thing they asked her to do was to put on a wig. Joyce refused. So if you look up Joyce I hate, Walker, you know, I hate that so she, much. She became famous for her afro and the big hoop earring. And at a time when the Black and Beautiful movement was that, she became the face of that movement. Wow. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm going to give you one of my card. Um, for you to check out my YouTube channel and you could check out the videos and I'm gonna put this video up tomorrow so you could definitely subscribe and so far I just have monologues up um, but this is going to be my first interview so like actually check it out go to my Facebook page okay you see every post I've been to over the last three weeks I will I definitely will tell what's your Facebook name it's Mary McCullers David mm -hmm. Sanders Fortune 22 okay all right, thank you so much. I'll check it out. All right, well, thank you so much, sir. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to give you a card for my YouTube channel. Like, okay. so far, I just have monologues up there. Okay. Um, this is going to be my first, like, interview, so you could check it out and subscribe. Turn on post notifications, you know, and check out my videos, okay? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to give you one of my cards for my YouTube channel. I'm from Brooklyn, Coney Island. You're from Brooklyn? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I do appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, do you do you prefer seeing movies with white actors or black actors? It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to you. I'm You'll watch it either way. I'm You'll spend your money anyway. Yep. If okay. It's a good movie. I'm watching it. So, okay, wait. So, so I'm from. <laughs> so I'm from Saint Kitts and Nevis. Nevis. I mean, wait, your grandmother is from Nevis. Grandmother is from Nevis. And what's your grandmother's name? Her her maiden name is um oh god uh Macbeth. 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 Yeah. Oh my God! Wow. So my Lillian Macbeth. Wow. My family tree is uh, is uh, is Dominica and Cuba. Ooh. And she went right. To Trinidad. So the Joseph oh. the Joseph name comes from Dominica. It does. Yeah. Oh well, I'm learning about via, myself. And then via Cuba. And then via, and then via Cuba. Oh wow. Wow. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, Caribbean roots. Woo. Right on.